What's going on, everybody? It's your boy C4, bringing you part two of my Philadelphia mock offseason. This time, we're addressing free agency. Uh, in the last video, if you haven't checked that out, it was a lot more of the housekeeping, who you let cut and walk, managing the salary cap. Uh, I guess the highlights would be you got to re sign Jerry Macklin, Cedric Thornton, Chris Polk, Casey Matthews, and Nate Allen. You had to extend Fletcher Cox and Michael Kendricks, and look at restructuring Trent Cole, LaShawn McCoy, and Todd Harriman's contracts. Uh, for cutting, you had to cut James Casey and cut Kerry Williams. Both those guys are, you know, not playing nearly close enough to their cap hit. And you let Brandon Graham, Mark Smith, uh, Mark, Brandon Graham, Mark Sanchez, Brad Smith, and Jeff Mayo walk, uh, leaving us with a very sizable uh, cap salary cap to work with. I think we're around 20 million, I think. But today we're talking about free agency. Uh, we got how many players here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got like a bunch of players we could look at getting. Uh, so yeah, basically, if you missed the intro. Uh, on the Philadelphia Eagles message boards or whatever they have, they have an off-season slash uh, draft mock forum, and I currently have one the biggest, from what I've just looked, the most viewed and popular uh, mock off-season going right now on the board, so if you haven't checked that out, do that right now. Uh, but today, we're talking about free agency, so we're going to start with locks and then draft-dependent signing. So the locks are going to be players Eagles need to go after regardless, and the draft-dependent signing are going to be players who are totally based on how Philly plans to approach the draft, and it will make sense after seeing the mock draft, which will be part three of this mini-series, I guess we'll call it. So the locks, the first one is a little less appealing, but it's going to be Clint Bowling, the offensive guard from the Cincinnati Bengals. I think that guard is a major area of concern uh, for the Eagles because... Evan Matz is getting up there at age. Still a Pro Bowl type player. Made the Pro Bowl, I think. Uh, this yeah, he did make the Pro Bowl this year. And obviously that other guard spot between with uh, Todd Harriman's is a big question mark going into next year. Um, so like I said, I would rather get a really solid guard in free agency than using a draft pick on one. Uh, like I said, Todd Harriman's is a question mark for next season. And Clint Bowling has been super solid for the Bengals. He will be affordable and offers a lot more than you know Andrew Gardner would this year. He struggled. Uh, it seems like our backup guards, I think it's Gardner and I can't remember the other dude. But both one of them, they're both polar opposites. Gardner was good in run blocking, but horrendous at pass blocking. And then the other dude was good at uh, pass blocking, but horrendous in run. So I think he gets uh, you know, a very, very moderate uh, signing in Clint Bowling. I think he'll add, uh, add a lot to the depth of the offensive line. Because with Chip Kelly, as you see, when our offensive line uh, is you know struggling with depth, or with injuries and stuff like that. We need offensive line for this offense to work. So I think the more better players we can have, if we can have a solid fucking 10 offensive linemen, I will take that every day of the week. And the second lock is Byron Maxwell. Uh, looking at the cor the corner for Legion of Boom, obviously in Seattle. Uh, Revis is going to be 30 years old and kind of command a lot of money. Uh, I know he's going to be the number one guy that's going to jump off people's tongues saying, oh my god, we need to go out in second year and get the best fucking players. But Maxwell is also a typical Philadelphia signing for the Eagles. You know, a middle round or a middle grade. You know, it's not going to cost a whole lot. But he's like Michael Jenkins last year. Malcolm Jenkins really panned out, uh, kind of slowed off near the end of the season. But for the most part, Malcolm Jenkins was a very, very good player. Um, I think that, uh, you know, like I said, Darrell Revis is going to want like 10, 7, 8, 9 million a year. That is a fucking lot to sink into a 30 year old. That is even if the Patriots let him go. I think Maxwell is going to want to break out from the mold in Seattle. He gets picked on a lot because the teams are going to go off against Richard Sherman, and he's a very, really solid player. I don't know if he has the whole. Uh, he could be the guy that we, makes, we make our new franchise player, like the big time player, because I think he's, you know, he's going to compete. He's going to come and compete much better than what we have right now. Uh, he has the size that Chip Kelly wants, and I believe from what you've seen, or from what I've seen actually from him playing in Seattle, he can be the left on an island like Billy Davis wants all his corners to do, and he'll do better than Bradley Fletcher. Left on an island is essentially what Bradley Fletcher did when he got burned by pretty much every top Pro Bowl level wide receiver Philadelphia faced. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, fuck, Des Bryant, uh, you know, it just the list goes on and on. So if Philly wants to continue to try to play Seattle style defense, might as well grab Seattle's number two corner. If you know if you can't beat him, join him. So that is those locks. Now we're going to go into the draft-dependent signings, who, like I said, our players totally based on how Philly plans to approach the draft. So first one up, we got Jake Locker at the quarterback position. Uh, I was a huge fan of Jake Locker coming out of the University of Washington. Offers a dual threat that Chip hasn't had in his system since Michael Vick. Uh, would offer excellent competition for the backup spot with upside to challenge Foles if he struggles. Uh, his inability to stay healthy is a big concern, but having Locker as a number two in the depth chart with upside, as well as still some potential to grow, would be a positive situation to have on the depth chart. Matt Barkley sucks. Fuck Matt Barkley. And if you told me that, you know, I can have either Jake Locker or Mark Sanchez for the number two spot, I'm taking Jake Locker every other week. There's not going to be a huge demand for him, I don't think. And like I said, this depends on the draft. Obviously, Marcus Mariota 
uh, you know, the video below who you're watching behind has Marcus Mariota as the Eagles quarterback. But if they don't go decide to go quarterback with Jake uh, with Marcus Mariota, or maybe even Bryce Petty later, Jake Locker is an excellent guy to uh, pick up off the free agents wire. Uh, number two, uh, cornerbacks. Uh, I'm going to call this the San Francisco duo, either of Chris Culliver or Paris Cox. Uh, highly doubt San Francisco is going to bring back both. I think they'll bring back one. But it's going to be tough for them to re-sign both. And if they miss out on Byron Maxwell or feel that they're not going to want to go corner with the first or second round pick in the draft, get two corners in free agency. Um, so I think that, you know, like I said, they may need two, sto- may need, blah, may need two starters through free agency. Not only We're not the only uh, defensive back starved team, but I can't see any scenario where Chip and Howie aren't super aggressive in getting a new secondary player. Uh, I think they get the odd man out in San Francisco. Chris Culliver, obviously from the Philadelphia area. Uh, a little bit younger, but Paris Cox was playing at a Pro Bowl level last year for sure. I think either one of them is both an upgrade and will be cheaper than what Kerry Wins is making this year. So yeah, like I said, if you're not going to get you know a Trey Waynes or you know a Marcus Peters with your first round pick uh, at the cornerback, get two new brand, new starting defensive backs through free agency. And the final draft dependent signing is strong safety. Obviously, Malcolm Jenkins is a legit free safety in our system, but it's clearly a coverage coverage specialist. I think that Devin McCourty is the, probably the dream signing uh, this offseason for any real e- realistic Eagle fan because he's still in his prime and has been outstanding for the New England Patriots. But I have some issues with this. Uh, issue number A, I can't see the Patriots letting him go, especially if they let Darrell Revis walk. I think they have the money to sign one of these guys, and if Darrell Revis goes, I think they're going to go all out and get Devin McCourty. They're not going to lose their two best players in their secondary. They're the Patriots. They're a Pro Bowl team. Um... But if they keep Revis, which is probably a little bit much more unlikely than uh, they keep Revis and let McCourty go, um, like most ideal safety targets that are hitting the free agency market, they're primarily coverage specialists. Realistically, Eagles like signings like Raheem Moore from uh, the Denver Broncos, which we just got the D- Broncos defensive coach, uh, DB coach, so I could see that happening. Ron Parker from the Kansas City Chiefs, or Denora Searcy from the Buffalo Bills, with Searcy being my top guy out of the bunch. They're primarily coverage guys. I don't really know... Obviously, you can look at it from one standpoint, saying the Eagles are so bad at fucking their secondary that you'll take two cover safeties. But I really believe you need a tackler, you know, a big hitter compliment to Malcolm Jenkins, as opposed to having two coverage guys back there. Um, so if we go strong safety and free agency, I think Devin McCourty is the dream unrealistic signing. But Denor Searcy is a lot more realistic and an upgrade to, obviously, Nate Allen playing back there. Uh, but yeah, you can also look into this year, too, with uh, Malcolm Jenkins and Nate Allen. Both those guys are primarily cover guys. Nate Allen's definitely not a big hitter by any means. Uh, you can tell by how many fucking tackles he misses. But uh, I can definitely see, you know, if McCourty gets, you know, re-signed up by the Patriots, which is probably going to happen. Denor Searcy is an excellent upgrade and a real, more, like I said, you'll probably get him for, you know, a $30 million contract. Um, and having two guys like that, if you have Searcy and Jenkins in our secondary, obviously going to be on paper for sure a huge, huge upgrade uh, at the beginning of training camp. But there you have it, guys. So that is free agency. Uh, let me know in the comment section below who you think Philly should go after a free agency. Do you agree with my signings? Do you think some of these guys suck? Let me know. Smash that like button. And make sure you stay tuned for part three of this series, which I'm going to be doing my mock draft. The best fucking mock draft in the face of the earth. So until next time, guys, it's your boy C4 saying peace out.